let's turn our attention to this hypothetical reaction. So we don't even have real elements in here, let alone compounds. It's just two of these A's, two of these B's will become D. The proposed mechanism has an equilibrium in it. In the case of looking at these, equilibrium could happen when there's just not much of an activation energy between the two sides. No matter how you view this, whether you view it going this way and look at how much, how high the bump is, or whether you look at it from this way and look at how high the bump is, there is not very much of an activation energy. This is small in either the forward or the reverse direction. So there is not much reason for it to pick one or the other. It's not like going up a very large hill and then falling a long way. If that was the case, it'd be like, well, there's no reason to change in either direction. But in this case, where from both sides, it looks like a very small hill, then you have an equilibrium. For this case, in the proposed mechanism, we have step one is that two A's and a B are going to combine and it's an equilibrium because it's a, such a small activation energy to form C. C, C isn't even in here. Oh, it must be an intermediate. And then in step two, you see we haven't used the last B. So B and C combine and that forms our D. Now, if we're trying to analyze this in terms of the rate, we're gonna have to come up with the Ks, right? In step one, since I have this double-headed arrow, I'll say K1 is the forward direction and K minus one is the reverse direction. And then this would be K2 like normal. If this has such a small EA, then it's probably fast as well as reversible. That leaves this as being the slow step. That means we're going to have to include this when we do our analysis. You always find the slow step, use it and work backwards. That seems very odd, but I'm gonna point it out specifically because there was a class that I had where it took me like half of the quarter to figure out that I should be working the problems backwards instead of starting at the beginning and going forwards. This is that sort of situation. You find where the slow step is, you start from that, and then you include the things that happened before it. So we would start by saying, all right, I've determined that the second step is slow, so I'm gonna start with rate number two, which is K2, B, and C concentrations, because this is an elementary step, so I just use what's there and write it. C is an intermediate, and we can't keep it in here. I need to replace it with how fast C is being created. I'm going to have to work harder on this one because rate one is a reversible. C might be created by K1, but it's being depleted by K negative one. If this has reached equilibrium, then that means that the forward rate and the reverse rate are the same. Forward would be K1, the concentration of A would be squared and the concentration of B would also exist. The reverse rate is the K minus one and it just depends on the concentration of C. And I know that these are equal to each other. Since K minus one C is equal to K1, A squared and B, then that means that I can say the concentration of C equals K1 over K minus one, there we go. I can just substitute into rate two. So rate overall now will be this rate two with the substitution put in. And if I rearrange it so it looks nicer, K1, K2, K minus one on the bottom, and then concentration of A squared, concentration of B squared. And because I ended up including all the steps, I'm not really surprised they ended up with something where it matched these coefficients ended up being the exponents because I used all the steps in my analysis.